Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, back by popular demand is Venus Marco. <laughs> when she was on the show before, she mentioned that she made vegan cheese, and everybody said, please show us how. And it's almost time for the holidays, and nothing is more inviting to your guests, especially if they're not vegan or plant-based yet, than cheese, a cheese platter. And she's going to show you so many different variations just from one recipe. And she's also a cancer survivor, breast cancer survivor. And this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So she can inspire you on that level as well. Please welcome back to the show for cheese, marvelous cheese, vegan cheese, of course, Venus DeMarco. It's nice to see you again. I had so much fun with you last time. You were just so delightful. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back. I'm doing what I love. This is what I love to do. Teach people about making healthy food and have fun. People are a little uptight these days. So we need to, we need to change that. All right. In case people didn't see you last time, you have a remarkable story of recovery from breast cancer. Yeah, I call myself a breast cancer overcomer. Uh, in 2009, I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer with a nine centimeter tumor and five that rotated around. It was, I decided to not do what the doctors wanted, which was a double mastectomy and eight months of chemo and all of that. Now, I, my story is very much a God story. I supernaturally healed, but you know, even God says, this is the temple of the Holy spirit. You have to take care of it. It's a command that we take care of our bodies. Now, a lot of people, what does that mean? That means give it real food, right? Get rid of the stress in your life, forgive people. So I wrote a book called fearless and it is really a different journey. This is not the type of cancer book or like Chris work. And I love his, uh, his plan, his everything that he did. So if you're looking for a real plan, I'm going to suggest that you go to Chris work and get his um, plan because that's not what I did. I'm more of an, I like to inspire people and uh, not tell people what to do because everybody's story is a little different. And I will say you have the most awesome fans. After I was on last time, so many people contacted me, bought my book. Um, and I just want people to know that I love people and I will pray for you and I will hear your story, but I cannot legally tell you what to do. Um, and, it, and I can't hold your life in my hand. I can tell you what I did and inspire you not to be afraid. I, I have a saying, is it the fear or the disease that actually kills us? You know, we've been very conditioned to be so afraid of cancer. And we've seen people die and we've seen people get very sick. So it does bring up a lot of fear, but fear feeds into that. So it's a lot of things are how you um, look at it. Uh, uh, I think his, name, his last name was Moritz. He wrote a book called Cancer is, is Not a Disease. It's your body giving you a second chance to change your life. And when you change your life, so people like, we like good food, right? I yep. always have liked good food. Um, at that time, I became vegan. I became raw vegan. But what keeps us healthier than anything else is joy. And, get, and watching how our stress levels, we are going to get stressed. Stress is part of life, but we can't live in a stressed out state, right? So we need to understand that I've watched people heal, I mean, miraculously by just getting rid of all negativity in their life, only watching comedies and literally just laughing all the time. I've seen all kinds of miracles, but I believe in miracles because I'm a miracle and I uh, so I believe in that, but I will always, I've always answered everybody's emails and calls, but just so you know, I cannot tell you what to do. I used to coach people with cancer and I just have other plans and I, and that's not really what I want to do, but I will inspire you to live because we're all supposed to live and not die. We're supposed to live long lives, not short lives. So but then the food part comes into it, which is very, very important. And 
I did see something very interesting with a friend of mine who, by the way, passed. But when we would, when I would juice for her, she hated the juice so much that how could it heal her? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, so me, I love the juice. I Oh, some of the smoothies I drank, most people couldn't have handled them, but I loved it. I, I love, I knew what it was doing. So it, that's a, so again, you're telling yourself, this is awful. This is awful. The body is a servant of the mind. If the mind is saying, oh, this is terrible, terrible. We're going to, um, you know, this is awful. How, how am I ever going to get this down? And then the body goes, oh, it must be really bad. You know, it's like if, if, if I've gone to a wedding or something and I have a piece of wedding cake, People say, how did you eat a piece of wedding cake? I said, I never told my body it was bad for me. I had one piece. It was great. <laughs> you know, it's all how you handle it. You know, I don't have food addictions, so I can do things like that. But it is very important that we understand that the body is a servant of the mind. You can, you can speak blessings and you can speak curses, you can speak life, and you can speak death. It's up to you. So watch your words. Even if you're scared, don't let it come out of your mouth. Yeah. And you're not being in denial. You're just not speaking it. Hey, Venus, what was your diet like before your cancer diagnosis? Well, you know, I always, I was eating organic, but I'm going to tell, I was, I have been vegetarian and vegan before. And then before this, I was a big skier and I was living up in uh, Sun Valley, Idaho for a while. I had my skincare clinic up there. I was an esthetician for a long time. I went from California to Seattle to Sun Valley because I needed sun. I couldn't handle Seattle. That is one dark place. Um, and I got into that high protein, high fat thing that everybody was doing, not knowing really what you were doing. So I'm going to say I was eating a lot of animal products, a lot of cheese, and I was drinking a lot of wine. And, um, and, it, and I was going through perimenopause. Not a good combination, people. And there are many tumors that feed off high fat. So we have to, and we need fiber, 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 not protein, protein, meat, protein. And the, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly, but it, always amazes me that that seems to be the most important thing on people's minds is how much protein, you know, I think we need, you know, if you're eating enough calories, you'll get enough protein, right? But if you are, if you're not eating enough, which most people honestly, and either eat too little, or they eat way too much, they're not eating a normal amount of food. And an, a normal amount of food is quite a bit of food. I mean, when I look at what women eat and I can't, and I look and, and sometimes it happens to me too. I get in a hurry that some of them are not even getting a thousand calories in a day. That's wow. hard. That's oh hard. yeah. I see it all the time, all the time. And even with me, I have to, because I live alone and people think, Oh, I'm a chef. I'm sitting here eating all the time. I actually don't. I'm a real fellowship girl. I like to eat with people. So I think I need a husband. <laughs> well we can maybe get you one and you know uh, are there any viewers today that are available <laughs> are you looking for somebody that's geographically desirable to you no if he has enough money we can have two homes <laughs> <laughs> you're hilarious <gasps> no I just say it like it is you know I yeah. say what everybody else is thinking you know that's funny have you yeah. ever tried like a veggie date or anything like that uh, no, I have a little hard time with dating, uh, some of the dating services or, or apps or whatever. It's, uh, not really my thing. I think it will hap or happen organically. That's what I'm hoping. You know, I'm out a lot and I was just in South Carolina. I went up to do a TV show up there. It went great. It, I, I hadn't seen these people in six years and then I got asked to come back. It was a lot. First, they interviewed me and then we, you know, and then we did this huge cooking segment. It was a riot. We had so much fun. And the lady by accident didn't know it was a removable pie pan. <laughs> and half of the pie crust went on the floor, but luckily I had made a whole, my whole pie before. So 
it was no big deal. It went really well. And it was very, you know, it's in the South. I made food that, you know, Southern people would really enjoy, but was vegan. I had a blast, an absolute blast. They, the one lady kept saying, you're a trip. <laughs> Will we be able to see it anywhere? I need to get it and post it. Um, I went on to their um, Facebook. They aren't, YouTube kicked them off. Um, so they're not on YouTube anymore, but I am going to, if I can't share it from their page, which I tried, I'm going to get the producer to send me a link. So, you know, we just, it's a strange world we live in, you know, you can't have your own opinions and then you get kicked off or if it's not exactly what they want, that shouldn't happen. We live in the United States, right? We can talk about food all day. We're never going to get kicked off. <laughs> Oh, do you know the name of the show by any chance? Yes, it's Watchmen Broadcasting. It's W B P I Channel 36, I think, or 49. I can't remember. It's Watchmen Broadcasting. It was a riot. Um, the cameraman came up and said that was the best cooking segment we've ever had. Uh, you were a blast. I would was, love to see it. That sounds amazing. I'll, I'll I just, get it. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I just wanted to read a nice comment from Jerry before it disappears. Wow, her skin is so pretty, a reflection of her beautiful spirit. Oh, well, thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Because I sure wasn't feeling that way today. Well, you, you're a hoot on camera, so I'm sure you did a wonderful presentation for them. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to take myself off camera because I know you want to use two cameras for your shoot so there you go you're i'm seeing double venus you are i'm just you kidding want me to... oh no it's fine it's fine I, i'm just i'm joking that like i see two venus oh oh i see i see okay i noticed the one on my computer moves slower <laughs> like it's behind a little so i'm wondering if we should just take that off or uh, are you not are you not seeing that i can see two different like views of you one is is you know, you on the left, and then one is where I see the little phone that you're probably going to be able to move. So whatever you feel is better. Um, I'm just seeing on there that I, and, and I noticed it with the last video, it's sort of, unless you can fix that when you edit, it's a little slower. See, no, I don't, I don't edit. So <laughs> you, okay. you can go with one camera or two, just let me know. And I'm happy to oblige. All right. I'm thinking, let's go with one. Let's forget the computer. Cause you can see me just fine. Right. Right. On this one, right? Yeah. So, okay. so, so we're well, gonna, I'm going to have her turn off the computer because it's just moving. I'm okay. like doing it now. It's real slow. Okay. Okay. Great. We'll leave there and we'll get started. So <clears throat> if somebody cannot see or anything, just tell me and we're going to, um, you know, I'll move my, my little thing here. Okay. So I'm very excited because the hardest thing I had giving up was cheese. Cheese to me was, that was my addiction. I'd come home from working at my day spa all day and, and my, how I would come down would be cheese and red wine. So I liked that dopamine and I liked the red wine relaxing, right? But it was an addiction. So some people eat a lot of sugar. I couldn't stop eating cheese. Like, I just loved it. Like, I could eat cheese, I, too much cheese, which we know is very bad for us. So when I became vegan, I decided I was going to learn how to make vegan cheeses. Now, you know, that was 14 years ago. And the vegan cheeses in the store were not like they are now. We had some wonderful cheeses. But again, and I've made cheeses, as you know, the last time a cheese sauce with... Um, the sweet potatoes and, and it was a great sauce. But when I'm getting ready for the holidays, I like to make a lot of different cheeses with nuts or seeds. But today we're gonna use all cashews and we're gonna do a cheese 101, okay? So we're going to, I have two cups of cashews here that I have soaked. And the thing about soaking cashews, it's not like other nuts, and, um, and by the way, I have to say something. 
You know how you're hearing everybody say all the plant milks on the market are bad. They have bacteria. They're this, they're that. Dr. Gundry says, oh, they have lectins. Well, let me tell you, if you make your own nut milks, you can soak it and you can get rid of the lectins. Now, cashews don't have that, but we soak them for the dessert because it softens it and it just makes it easier to um, smooth, okay? So hey, do you have an almond cow by any chance? You know, I don't, I have the Nutra milk. Um, and the reason I chose the Nutra milk over the almond cow was because it kept it as a whole food. In other words, there was very minimal waste. Oh, cause I thought they both ground it up and the milk came out interesting. I'll have to check them. I, I don't have one. I'm not sure. I know a lot of people have it and like it, but the Nutra milk's really cool cause it can be used as a food processor and it makes nut butter. So oh. I, when I was researching this, I actually went to the channel of John Kohler who like sells all the different ones. And it just, it just intrigued me and I'm very happy with it. It's uh, I've done a lot okay. of demonstrations with it, but, it, but whatever machine a people, a people use is great. You know, just, just well, don't use cow milk. Yes, no, exactly. So I'll get that information from you later. So we're going to put in our soaked, rinsed, drained and rinsed cashews. And I'm going to take my little flip flops off here because it's easier. Now, what we're going to make first is just a simple cream cheese. OK, so it's got we've got I'm going to put the uh, yeast in first. So after our last time when you talked about fortified and unfortified, is, is Nucci uh, Licious fortified? Nucci Licious, I believe, is unfortified. That's what I thought. So I started checking the differences, right? And then one day I saw you use this and I thought, I'll try that one too. I really like sorry foods. Yeah, I think I think that's a very delicious one. Dylan Holmes makes a delicious unfortified one. Yeah, I just think I, 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 when I've done taste tests without looking, it sounds or sounds it's tastes like the ones that are fortified. You can almost taste the chemicals. Exactly. And so you had me paying attention. So now I get the unfortified. So we're going to use two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Now, I nutritional yeast is just awesome. It tastes like cheese. And Stella's going to make an appearance, huh, baby? Because she thinks I'm going to drop something. So we're going to do, oh, I'm telling, I'm going to do the white miso. I'm trying not to have to wash my, um, so we're going to just do white miso. This gives it a really nice, um, I, I, you know, kind of that briny taste that you need in cheese, but because it's a cream cheese, we're not going to add a lot. And then we're going to add three tablespoons of lemon juice. And we're going to use a teaspoon of salt. And I know most people, oh, by the way, I got the green salt that you talked about. Oh, you like it? Do you like it? I love, I love it, but I love anything seaweedy. Um, but we're not going to use green salt in our cheese because we don't need green cheese. It would be like green, green ham and eggs. <laughs> so, Unless, of course, you want to make something for St. Patrick's Day. Exactly. Then it would be great. So we're going to put a teaspoon of salt. And this is how simple this is. And we're going to take this cheese to all different levels. And we're going to use a half a cup of water. Now, whenever you're cooking or making food with natural things, sometimes things go just perfectly. And sometimes you got to change them up a little. Ask, if, does anybody, anybody in this audience who's watching, do you, um, do you actually, do you love cheese? Do you ever make cheese? Let's type it in the chat if we do. Jerry's saying, what brand of miso paste do you use? I use two and they're the um, miso, and we're going to use chickpea too today. So it is nap. Now certified, oh, it's American made organic miso. It just says miso master organic. Can you see that? Yep. I've seen that one at Whole Foods and Sprouts. Yeah. So they, they literally have gone up in price. It is crazy what groceries, do you know what an organic thing of broccoli cost me yesterday? 
Six ninety nine. I'm going to guess. Yes. How did that happen? I don't know. How did I know the exact price? You know, I think prices have just gone up for everything. Oh, but that is like insane. I'm going to outside of my apartment, grow me some broccoli. All right. This may be a little loud. <laughs> Now, the thing about these cheeses, too, is that they will set, once they uh, are in the fridge, they set up, too, okay? So, now we're going to move some of this stuff. We're going to, you want to taste it? We want to make sure. Perfect. So, what we have here is a nice cream cheese. I'm going to put some of it in this bowl. It's just very simple. Ah, where's my spatula? See, I knew I'd forget something. It's so but easy to make. How I roll. Cream cheese is so easy to make, and the, the plant-based ones are wonderful. Miyoko, Kite Hill, but they, you know, oh, they yeah. can be costly. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're gonna take some of this out. I'm going to, with the rest of this, make a very, um, what we would call very pungent, briny, something I would probably serve more at a party. Um, so here is a very plain cream cheese, right? I'm gonna show you guys. And, Can you see that okay? All right. Now this, and if you want it, this, this nutritional yeast is so potent in its taste that it, um, you can really taste it. So if you want, you can do two tablespoons instead of, um, or one instead of, instead of, um, excuse me, sorry about that guys. I know you just wanted to see my hand. So, now here's something you can do with this. So here you have a plain cheese, right? You can just put that on your bagels, use it forever, whatever you want. You could also add um, pureed fruit and make like strawberries and make a strawberry cream cheese, right? Uh, how about some red onions and or green onions and uh, some basil or just different, Eat, so it's still mild, right? So we could go green onions, a little bit of basil, um, some olives maybe, and serve that. So it's still not, and me, I would just put jalapenos in it. Oh, by the way, I love that habanero balsamic vinegar. <laughs> that was so good. People, it wasn't really hot either. Like I thought it was gonna be real hot, but it just had that enough heat but it had the taste, you know? And I was like, yeehaw, take me back to Texas, baby. Okay. <laughs> if you so, like spicy ones, he has a new pretty spicy one, not quite as spicy as the Blazing Habanero. It's called Jalapeno Lime, but it's really ooh, quite good. I bet it is, yum. All right, so guess what we're gonna do with this? We're, I, we're making a, a recipe together. Because I'm teaching a cooking class somewhere, and um, I'm going to do a charcuterie board, a vegan charcuterie board. Charcuterie. Charcuterie. I, I never heard of a charcuterie board. I love I, I know. I, I was waiting for you to catch on. A charcuterie so, board is wonderful, but I don't know what it is. But charcuterie. No, it's because nobody ever says charcuterie right. So we said, I saw a thing once with this board. It was called a shark coochie board had a big shark on it and said for all of you who can't say charcuterie so um and i'm thinking what would be kind of a fun seasonal thing so 
we're going to add some pumpkin to this. And uh, Estella loves pumpkin. So let's say we're going to add about a half a cup to that. And we're going to stir this in. We're going to stuff dates with this mixture. And we're going to see. And I have a friend here. And she's going to taste it too. And we're going to see if it's any good. So we're going to add some chipotle. Got to give it a little spice. I'm going to say maybe a quarter teaspoon and an eighth. Uh, we're going to add some cinnamon. We're going to do like a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Uh, maybe a quarter. This isn't too much. It, it's We don't want to overdo it. I'm going to stir this up. And again, once this sits in the refrigerator, I put it in a piping bag and pipe it into the dates. So let's see what it tastes like. Hmm, a little more cinnamon. So yes, go. we're gonna go a little more cinnamon. So we're creating here. Now, we're gonna stuff some dates. And honestly, um, like I said, I would let it sit up, put it, I'm gonna put it in the date, and I'd put it in a piping bag. And then I would, on the, plate, I would put a few pomegranates on it and dust it with some um, cacao. So now you want to come try one? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to try this and see if it tastes good. I think it might need a little bit more chipotle, but you got the sweet, a little bit of what do you think? That's really good. You like it? Yeah, that's really good. Oh, I love days. <laughs> yeah, so mm. I like it. The um, pumpkin. The pump, you can taste the pumpkin mm -hmm. good? Okay, mm -hmm. can you taste the two whole thing? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's so. Good. Make it right now. <laughs> two of us like it. Oh! <laughs> so, like I said, oh, that is good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's different, but. really good so anybody have any questions on that let me look it looks delicious yummy cream. Is, anybody on, is anybody on here can yeah we they, well there are you can't you can't hear them but you can definitely see them in the chat for sure yeah i can't see anybody so anyway here so we have some pumpkin with cinnamon chipotle put it in a date add some pomegranates on top of it and dust it with cacao how beautiful would that look at, at you know, Thanksgiving? And it is really good. It like gets better as it, she's over there going, yeah. As it goes down, you can start to get the layer of flavors. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. There we go. So there's two, two recipes, right? Two down and two to go. I always have jalapenos in my kitchen and fresh and pickled and any way I can get them. Huh, Stella? All right. Oh, yeah. I know what th these are good. <laughs> yeah. All right, that hit the spot. So we used pumpkin, we did something, but we're gonna do, now we're gonna take this cheese, the, what's left in here, or you know, I would probably do the whole thing like this. And we're going to make it much more pungent. And then we're going to add all kinds of stuff to it. And of course, I forgot um, crackers. So we are going, we're going to add, um, we're going to add some apple cider vinegar to this. Now, this is, like I said, this is, cheese 101 a lot of times i will make a cheese and literally ferment it for 48 hours and then go from there 
And then it gets really that cheddary taste, you know, the real uh, pungent. I like that word, pungent. And I'm gonna add more miso. So I'm gonna add another tablespoon, but I'm gonna use the chickpea miso, okay? So what do you guys think? Do you think you'd make any of these so far? Why not? Oh, here, here's a question from Jennifer. Can we use serrano peppers instead of jalapeno? Honey, you can use anything you want. I use chipotle in the pumpkin one. I think uh, serrano might be a little too much in that one. But in this recipe, if you wanted to chop up some peppers in it, I'll show you what we're going to do. So we, we've made this a little more, um, as I say, we put more things in it to make it much more pungent. What I do with my, you know, if I lived in a bigger house, it would be easier. I wouldn't lose everything. You know, it's because it's so small. <laughs> okay. So now we're just going to get this going. So I, I do have a funny story from the last, from the TV show. A lot of funny things happen, but at the end, Dorothy says, it was a Christian TV station. So she said to me, she goes, you know, here in the Bible, it says, you know, we sacrifice the bull of the lamb and then we eat the sacrifice. And I said, that's right. But that's after the fall of Adam and Eve. I said, so the orig God's original design was vegan. In fact, I said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to look up Eve because I got an apple to pick with that woman. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, you're a trip. But you know what? We'd all be naked and just eating vegetables. <laughs> it's too hard to make me. Well, I, I don't want to scare people either, but I mean, you wouldn't. I might like... You know, I'm heading on down to 70. So, you know. Hey, um, Venus, Mona wants to know if it firms up in the refrigerator and when you ferment, do you leave it at room temperature? Yes, you leave it at for, uh, and now it doesn't, these cheeses don't firm up hard. They just aren't, they just get a little more um, firm. Okay, not, we're going to do a firm cheese today too. But, um, I do. I leave it at room temperature. Sometimes I put it in my dehydrator at like 98. Um, if you have a gas stove, you can wrap it in a, a towel and just put it in, you know, without turning it on, of course. And to, please remind people that it's in there because they'll turn it on and, and then you'll have a big explosion. So, yes. And I, for, you know, you can even ferment just with apple cider vinegar, you know, or you can ferment with probiotics. There's so many ways to do that. But, you know, this, um, I would love around here to do an advanced um, cheese class, you know, live with people and have everybody ferment their own cheeses and, um, and take their own stuff home. It would be great. So we're going to put this in a bowl and we're going to add stuff to it. I have never had anybody um, taste my cheeses and go, oh, now I have seen them eat some of the store-bought cheeses and say that, um, you know, I could use, I mean, I love Miyoko's artisan cheeses. I love her mozzarella. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of them out there. There are so many companies. I mean, my dream would, would be to have a little, um, a little vegan cheese shop and just have all kinds of really cool things in there. California vinegars, um, you know, make vegan um, like sauces, just do, you know, just as small like you would find in Europe, you know, just a small cheese shop. So we're just gonna get these out. Now I gotta tell you, I bought something everybody. I want you to see this thing. I thought this would really help. 
It's from Vitamix. But I got to tell you, it doesn't do much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, I don't get much out from it. So I was like, well, that was a waste. I mean, it's so we'll deal with that later. All right. So now. Cheryl, the recipes are in the show notes. They're right under YouTube. I see them plain as day right under the video. It says today's recipes. Maybe you need to refresh your screen. The pumpkin one won't be on there because I just made it up, but eventually I will get it up on my website. All right. So what we're going, can you all see me good? I can see okay. you. Great. Okay. So what I have in here is shallots sun-dried tomatoes, and we're gonna put this and some um, fresh rosemary that I took from my garden. Oh, my garden, the, the thing outside my front door. <laughs> it's a pot. <laughs> yes, my garden. And I have little miniature heifers that run around that my dog can chase. Mm. Stephanie, my says, Stephanie says, Venus, I feel the same way about that scraper. You guys were sold a bill of goods with that one, huh? Yeah. I'm telling you, it, it's really sad. I thought that, oh man, finally, somebody came up with something really good, but they didn't. All right, so then I'm gonna add some parsley. I didn't know this, when you chop parsley up and just leave it in the fridge too long, it naturally gets dry. <laughs> it's really that's, great. That's All right. Hey, we got another skin comment from the Urban Pharmacy. Venus, your skin is gorgeous. That's two today. Thank and you. It must be the products I use. What maybe do you it's do? Just, Maybe I'm just full of love. Hey, Venus, Adalia says, are there any brands of vegan cheese without coconut oil? So, yes, there's um, not every, Miyoko's has a lot that don't have coconut oil. Yeah, she has a few that do. I think you just have to read the labels. Yeah. You the know, I don't have, yeah, you really do. It's, um. You know, some of them are very plain. Some have, uh, again, I don't buy a lot of them uh, because I'll just make my own. And then you save yourself a lot. But let's say I was going to have a little party and uh, I would go, I would go and get her art, artesian cheeses and put it out on the board. Now we have a nice um, cheese here that has sun-dried tomatoes, shallots. And of course you can't taste it. And I would add maybe once it sits in the um, refrigerator, it's going to get much firmer. See, it's a little um, smooth. It'll get firmer. There's a lot more stuff in here than you can see. But again, I forgot crackers, so I can't even taste this. But you get the idea. Be the king or queen of your own kitchen, all right? So make things the way you like it. Like personally, some jalapenos would be great in there. And I'll chop them up put them in. It would go great with everything. Even a little cilantro would be good in there. Make up what just get inventive. You know, we get in such ruts in our whole life. We get into ruts. I have to do it this way. Oh, I, I was going to add some onion powder to that. I, I was talking too much. And so I'll add it in here to the second cheese. And, um, I'm gonna add some onion powder. I meant to add that to the blender, but you see, everything is fixable. You know, it, it's like you can just add it later. You know, don't, don't, what I'm trying to say is, don't stress yourself out when you're do, cooking. The great thing about cooking with plants, it's so easy to fix it, right, AJ? Yeah, absolutely. That's what they said at my culinary school. It's not what you can make. It's what you can fix. Hey, there is a question from Jerry. What products do you actually use on your skin? I use Neora. <laughs> is it, is it uh, cruelty-free? Oh, yes. It's so clean. With, with my history, I have to use very clean products, which we should all, because you see prevention is the cure for anything. Let's prevent disease by doing the stuff that we do once we get sick. So that's the issue. We are like, a lot of people just think they're sitting ducks or my mother had it. I'm just going to say your genes are not your destiny. Please, people. You know, 
what we do is we have the same habits as our family, our same patterns that can cause the body to break down. It's not your genes. Your genes are fine. Stop acting like the people who got sick. Okay. So, um, but I, yes, it's vegan. It's very, very clean and it works. That's the difference. At my age, you see some of the stuff that's really great out there and clean. It doesn't do much. It's beautiful, but I need the big guns. So, but thank you for the compliment, you guys. That's really kind because when I was on here, I'm telling my girl, mm, man, I need a facelift. No. <laughs> To be honest, that was our conversation. I said, Stella, go get me a rich man. You're going to give me a face. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to make my own money. I always have. What am I saying? It's well, really a joke, you guys. Why don't you open that little cheese shop? Well, I think that one day I might. Um, you can call it cheese, would... Jesus DeMarco. Jesus DeMarco. See, can you guys see? Like, look at this. Look at that. So think, I'm going to put this in the fridge. It's going to firm up like a, a cream cheese, all right? And then you're going to have crackers, and people can just put it on their crackers. They can, I don't know, put it on their lover. I don't care. Wherever you want to put it, it's that good, okay? And people don't ever take yourself too serious, because I don't. Do you ever make your own crackers? I, I used to make them all the time. I haven't so much lately, but yes, I love to make my, I have dehydrators in my back room. I've got all kinds of stuff. So, you know, it's just lately I've been traveling a lot and doing, I mean, work has just started booming for me. And, um, you know, as long as I don't, and, you know, insult anybody with some of the stuff that comes out of my mouth. We're doing just fine. But, you know, um, I had somebody tell me at my um, in my classes at this one store, she wrote a review and said, Venus's classes are good for the soul, the spirit and the body because you laugh, you learn a lot and you eat good food. So. All right, so I'm going to put this in the fridge. Now we're going to do a hard cheese. Venus, where do you teach? Is it in person? Is it virtually? I do. I like in-person um, classes. I like interacting with people. I'm such an extrovert. I mean, that I, I'm laughing because my dog is being silly. Um, I love to do classes in person. It just makes it, you know... It just, I come alive in, when there's people in front of me. I mean, you knew, you know, you, you've been in front of lots of people, AJ. Yeah, the audience, it's, it is, it's a whole different experience. It is. You should take me with you as your sous chef one day. You never know. I mean, I don't mind. I'll sit there and cut up vegetables for you and learn and do what you, you know, that would be fun. So, um, yeah, so I just, that's just who I am. I, I don't, I do a live, um, I used to do a, a Facebook live every week on my, in my group, a Healthy Life Made Simple. I got so busy with things, some companies I do work for, so I'm out on, out do, in public doing work for them, um, educating people on certain nutritional products. I'm uh it's just been, it's been really great. And I just got asked to develop a recipe for a company that I did one before and they liked it so much. He asked for another one. So they put one of their um, fibers in it. So, um, you know, I keep really, really busy. Now I want to ask you something. I, there's a, a, a cheesecake place in the town I live in. They have nothing. I mean, nothing vegan. All right. To me, that's like insane. So I'm in there one day and I said, you know, I can't even have anything here. And we have such a big vegan community here. Have you ever thought of doing a vegan cheesecake? And they said, we've tried. They didn't come out good. I said, well, you haven't tried mine. What if I make you one and you like it? You can pay me for the recipe. They loved it, paid for the recipe and have never used it. Wow. Well, I don't know why they don't make it. 
I have no idea, but you know what? I'm going to sell it to someone else. Okay, so we're now going to do a fig and cranberry cheese that you can literally slice. And I have one already made, so I can put it out on the plate, but we're going to do this one. So I'm going to use my other... I can't wait to eat the rest of those. Hey, so that, that pumpkin chipotle, mm, that's good stuff. All right, so... How long do they typically last in the refrigerator and can they be frozen? Carrie asks. Um, the cheeses, yeah. Carrie, I have found these cheeses, I don't find them to freeze well for some reason. I think the harder ones will, but the soft one doesn't. And plus it never lasts in my house, um, but they, they last a good week. Now, I'm, you know, I've just never froze one except for one time I did freeze a creamy one and I did not find it. The taste wasn't the same. I think when they're, they freeze better when they have oils in them. So we're doing a cup and a half of cashews. We're going to do, let's see, three quarters. So in this recipe, I say start with a half a cup of water, but because we have to cook this with the agar, just go ahead and put the three quarters of a cup of water in because it, it takes that with the agar. Uh, we're gonna do nutritional yeast after I clean this. It's a very versatile recipe. So that was the first recipe. This is a, a different one. I, this is um, a little different. So this has garlic in it and little different. It has, you know, I hate to say it. A lot of times the base of a cheese is, is pretty much the same, but we are gonna do three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Uh, two tape. We're going to do two tablespoons of lemon juice, two tablespoons of um, apple cider vinegar, but then we're going to have to cook this. So here's a question from Jennifer. If you wanted to serve one of the cheeses to non-vegan people, which one do you recommend she starts with? Um, I would do the more pungent one with all the, um, like the scallions and the you could do scallions and olives and, you know, I just did sun-dried tomatoes and olives. I would do that one um, because they tend to really like that one. Do you guys make cheese at all? I used to make it, you know, do you remember when Miyoko Shinner's book came out, Artisan Vegan Cheese? I used to make my own cream cheese back in the day, but then when she started selling it, I just started buying it. Yeah. And I also, yeah, her, I, I like though, because you can ferment even with sauerkraut juice, pickle juice, so many things, right? Because I looked at that book. I don't have that one. Well, well but, the other um, thing is, is, I mean, it's available even at Trader Joe's. Yeah, it's available. I, I mean, that girl, I got to tell you, I never met the woman, but she sure has, made, she's got an empire when it comes to vegan cheeses. So we're going to put a half a teaspoon of garlic. Powder. So... <clears throat> Half a teaspoon of salt. I do a heaping. The cheese naturally is salty, you guys. That will, non-cheese eaters, I mean, non-vegans, if you give them a cheese that is not salty, they won't know what it is. Like, it'll, it'll be so foreign to them. Okay. So we're going to do three quarters of a cup of water because we are going to cook this and then put it in a mold. But before we get to that, let's do our mold because I don't have a lot of space here. So. 
So, <clears throat> you know what I'd like to find? Some small molds like this that are the silicon or non-stick because it looks prettier. When I have to put the um, parchment paper in, it has the, you know, all the marks on it. All right, so we're going, I like, you. if this is a trick, take your parchment paper. And yes, this is unfortunately not the, the brown because I was, this is what I had. And I find when you crumble it like that, it lays in place. You don't have to fight it. You wanna make sure you have your mold ready. Now we're gonna get loud. We're going to add the two tablespoons of agar to this real quick. Nikki says, what about using a silicone muffin tray for a mold? Can you do me a favor and hold the back of this so it doesn't fall off? Um, yeah, you can make little ones, sure. I want, I want, I like it a little, more showy um so i like it a little like a real mold you know the muffin molds are a little small right but that would be cool you could do little ones that would be you know there's always a way right Now, if I make mozzarella, I do use tapioca uh, starch, but I like um, the agar in these cheeses. So, get this all in here. And I'm going to use, yes, that, that wonderful thing I got from Vitamix. Uh, from, uh, Vitamix. I mean, they should be ashamed of themselves. Well, why don't, you know, here's the thing. If you're not the only one saying that, so why doesn't somebody tell them? Why are they still making it? Well, I mean, maybe they could improve it. If, 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 if there are people watching that say they have the same experience, what's the name of that tool? The Vitamix spatula or yeah. Mark is watching from True North day nine of his fast and it says everything Ooh. is amazing. I bet when you're fasting, it looks even more amazing. Oh, I bet. Where's True North? True North is in Santa Rosa, California and Dr. Alan Goldhammer is doing a Q&A on the show live this Sunday, but we're doing ah. it later. We're doing it at 4 p.m. Pacific time, guys, because he's going to then make dinner for his family and show you how he can cook. And oh, and that's and awesome. Yeah. So we got a doctor cooking. Actually, we got a lot of doctors coming up cooking. Yeah, you get you get a lot of doctors on your show. I'm yep. I, I, I'm gonna I'm Doctor Venus. All right. So I'm. This is the secret is to whisk. Can you see me? Can you see the stove? Little. In fact, would you do me a favor? Could you move this? Just move the Vitamix. That would be awesome. Just, you can just put it over in that corner and let's hope it, make sure it doesn't pull this off. So we're just, you gotta keep whiskey. This comes quickly. Now it's different when I do like a, a mozzarella where I'll use the tapioca, it comes out more like a ball, but this one, just do it till it gets thick, okay? See, it's already thickening up. That's why you've got to use a little more water than you would in a regular cheese.
Yeah, I need to get out to California. It's been, you know, I lived out there from 75 till uh, 97. What, what part of California? Well, I, lived, I started out in San Jose and um, then I ended up in, outside of Fresno, I used a big skier. So I worked in a, I worked at the ski resort as a cocktail waitress and so I could ski for free. At night I worked and then I skied. And then I moved to Bakersfield, California. Can you believe it? And uh, I know I moved to Santa Cruz. I'm sorry. Cause then I met back skiing, met a man who lived in Bakersfield, fell in love and moved there for him. And we were supposed to get married. And I called the wedding off three, uh, 10 days before, even with all my family out. Thank God. Well, then I stayed and I was doing my own thing. And this little stove is very, um, you know, it's not like being on, on your own stove. And I did meet a man there and got married. Where is he now? He's still there. I, I divorced. He, he He's not a bad guy. He just wasn't my guy, you know? So see how that's starting to separate? It's already firm, you guys. That's it. Now we're going to take it off this thing. And you want to let it just cool down a little. And we're going to add our figs and our cranberries. So he's still there. I left and went up. I, I used to be like a gypsy. I would just move. Oh, I'm going to move now. Where am I going? So I went to Seattle. I knew somebody lived up there. It was the darkest place I've ever lived in my life. Try going from California to a place with no sunshine. And um, I just, I said, okay. So I went up skiing with some friends to Sun Valley. And I um, decided that I was going to go live there. And I skied and I opened up my skincare clinic there and just skied and had a great time and then moved. Then I had a chance to move to Texas, which was my favorite place in the world, Austin. But when my mother, when my dad died and my mom was getting sick, I needed to come here. So I'm happy wherever I am. I come up with all kinds of stuff. So here we have figs cut up small, half a cup of figs and a half a cup of cranberries. That's a holiday dish if I ever saw one. Oh, it's beautiful. And what's so great about this cheese, Chef AJ, is that every bite you get a little, like you get the, the saltiness from the cheese, you get the tart from the cranberry, and then the sweetness from the um, figs. And is there anybody on this show right now who has um, healed from breast cancer or has been diagnosed and is, you know, you know, haven't just can't decide what to do. Is there anybody? I'll ask them to put it in the chat. In the meantime, there's a comment. I've never made my own vegan cheese before. Would love to learn some basics. So the first rep recipe I think is very, very basic. The, the cream cheese. Yes. And that's why I showed you three things you can do from it. And so you've got really two things at once, but there were three recipes you could do out of it. So it is a basic recipe that you just add more to it. So now we're gonna add this to our mold. Yeah, can't see the mold. Okay, sorry. See it now? Yes. Okay. So far, we don't see breast cancer, but Mark says Peg had ovarian two years ago and whole food plant-based saved her life. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Yes. And you know, the estrogen driven, um, so estrogen is not bad. You know, estrogen is getting a really bad rap, but what's bad is when those estrogens go down the wrong, when you get too much of one and it starts 
and your estradiol and your estrone get high and your estriol get low. You know, you know, the body needs to be in balance too. So that's where, you know, I, I think a lot of people should be taking DIM and they should also be eating soy products because organic non-GMO soy also helps to prevent breast cancer. I've known people who had breast cancer that would eat a whole block of tofu a day. Just, and so, you know, there's something about that phytoestrogen. If you think about it, Asian, Asian women have the lowest amount of breast cancer and they also heal the fastest. So I just believe that was a ploy by the meat industry to tell people not to eat soy and that men would grow breasts from it. All right, so now I kind of put a towel under this. I guess the only, the only thing about having it on my computer is you could always see everything, but it tended to go slower. All right, just kind of pop it like that to get some of the air bubbles out. Cover it. Put it in the fridge. In about two hours, it'll be firm, but I made one yesterday and we're gonna plate it up. And again, wish I had some crackers to show you guys. I mean, so you can see me eat it. <laughs> We're gonna put it on this. So my logo has lemons in it. It's a healthy life made simple. And so I have logo uh, lemons. So we're gonna take this mold and we're just gonna put this cheese out. See how simple that was? Can you see that? That's a beautiful plate. Isn't that great? I wish I would have bought more of them. So now you have this molded cheese and I'm gonna get a little knife. My little golfer knife. All right. So let me show you. See how it slices? I love sliceable. It's so great. And then you just put it on a cracker. Let me see how it tastes. Okay, you guys wanna watch? Mm. So good. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe you'll start selling them. You, know, you never know. You never know. DeMarco's cheeses, I like that. Cheeses DeMarco. Mm hmm. This is so different because of the I like um, layers of flavor in my food, right? I like them. The tangy from the cranberry, the sweet from the fig, and then that briny taste from and salty taste from the cheese. It just makes it perfect. And you can just do anything you want with this. You can. I mean, I know what we're going to do. We're going to go to the store and get some crackers. No, <laughs> but um, so how simple. So now you see how you can make. It's not hard. It's really easy. And um, I think maybe I should do an online cheese class, maybe for your your group, but it does take some time. I think it'd be more fun in person because or we could do it and everybody could just ferment it and then we could come back in 48 hours and, and you know go into an advanced course and then change it. But I gotta tell you, AJ, I wish you were here to try this. Yeah, it looks amazing. What uh, Han is saying, what cheese is it supposed to resemble? So is there like a cheese in the real non-vegan world that that you're you know you get after? I Years ago, um, when I was eating cow cheese and I was living in Seattle, there was a cheese, something like this, but I think it was cranberries. I don't know if it was figs or not, but 
I remember eating that and it was a harder cheese. It was a little harder than this. And I loved it. It was very pungent. And so that's probably what came into my mind when I decided to make this and come up with it because it was a really good cheese. And this is really good. Do you want to try some? Here, let's, it, it's not just me. Let's let <laughs> Jessica try it here. Just, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll spread it on her hand. Perfect. She helps me so she can eat food. You know what cheese I used to love when I was little? It, it, it was like almost like a rectangle and it, it like had a smoked flavor and it was kind of hard and it was small and you cut it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Baby Gouda's. They, it was Baby Bell. No, but, but then it? it was like, it almost looked like a stick of butter, but it was darker and it had almost like this rind on the outside, but it was like smoky. It was, I, I got, I'll see if I can mm. find it. I don't think I've ever tasted that. Mm. But I have a smoky, rustic cheese on my website, too. Jennifer said, if you were using crackers, what type would you use? Well, definitely vegan. Um, I try to look, again, for the ones that have the least amount of ingredients that are gluten-free and oil-free. I do like Mary's because they are raw. Um, those are good crackers. I just look at ingredients when I go into stores. And sometimes you get very surprised by new products that are out. Yeah, I do like the brown rice crackers too. The little round ones. Have you ever had those? Yes, they're great. It was from Hickory Farms. That, it was a thing that you'd always get like at the holidays. And oh, holiday. so it was probably like a smoked cheddar. Yeah, exactly. That's, I remember liking that. They, yeah. yeah, they were very well known for that. Very no, well known. So see what we did and it didn't take very long. I mean, how long have we even been on? Not very. And you know, I had a show with uh, Carrie from the Vegify and she made crackers just out of cauliflower. It was oh, amazing. sure. I think as long as you put some flaxseed in there to bind it, I mean, it's probably what she did, right? I think she put potato flake, actually, but it was okay. incredible. Yeah. Uh-oh, Joyce said, broke my tooth on Mary's crackers. Be careful eating those. Yeah, they are very hard. I do, like if I make um, almond milk, I save my pulp. I make crackers with those when I juice. I will save a lot of the pulp and, and just put it in the freezer. I've thawed it out. I actually have that recipe on my um, website. And then I would put zucchini in there and bell peppers in there and a little flaxseed to hold it all together and some spices. A lot of times I'd make rye crackers and put um, caraway seeds in it and then put it on a, you know, the Teflex sheet, put it into my, uh, dehydrator and have great raw crackers. So you don't have to waste anything. You, know, you just save it all. Like my dog also gets juice pulp in her food. Stella, come here and say hi. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh. It's my girl. Isn't she pretty? She's so sweet. She's a good girl. She got in trouble earlier though. She knocked down one of my lights trying to bark at a dog outside. Adorable. So, uh, again, we did this really quick. It doesn't take that long to make things. I, I just want people back in the kitchen. I want them healthy again. I want their blood sugars not to spike so they're so tired at three o'clock in the afternoon. I want people to laugh again, enjoy their lives, and have people over for dinner. That is the best thing. I actually have people that will be coming through town or getting off work and they'll say, hey, I'm in your neighborhood. Do you have any food? <laughs> I'm coming <laughs> over. And I say, come over, I can make you food. It's great. You know? Venus, I'm curious, how many years has it been since you've been cancer free and do you have to get checkups at all? You know, I'm a, I don't go to doctors anymore. I got, cancer burnt me out so bad on doctors. I stopped going. And after the first year, and I would just go to holistic doctors and I gave up my health insurance. It would cost me so much for health insurance. And I just, for me, again, I'm not your average person. I get blood tests. I get thermograms, things like that. I, I, they really, um, in my book, I have a chapter called 
the Disneyland of cancer. And it's about a big place in Houston, which is very famous for cancer treatments. And what I saw there and the way I was treated and everything, I just knew I couldn't do it. And God told me not to do it. He said, I want you to write a book and you're going to show people the good, the bad and the ugly in the natural world. And you're going to take the fear out of people's hearts when it comes to cancer. And because also something happens sometimes when you are doing it natural and you're detoxing, there's a time where the, the tumors can grow because you're detoxing. And as soon as they start to grow, people freak out if they're going to a conventional doctor because the doctor's like, oh, my gosh, they're getting bigger. They're getting bigger. You know? And then they go the conventional route without giving the holistic treatments a chance. I have seen people do so well both both ways, but most people, um, it depends on the stage. I, I don't really want to give my opinion too much on this because I believe that we are, God can heal naturally. He can heal with, and he can heal with medicine. It's really, what I'm trying to say is understand that the body was meant to heal itself eat good food, rest, enjoy your life. This is all we have. Do not sit around every day stressing out, afraid of what's coming tomorrow. Nobody knows what's even coming in the next minute. Hey, my husband can walk right through that door. <laughs> he might have heard this somewhere. We don't know, right? What is in store for us? So enjoy your life. But most of all, laugh, you guys. Don't take yourself so serious. I, my friend that was with me in South Carolina, I'm telling you, I did some crazy things. Just us. We were laughing so hard. I thought I was my mother. This one thing I did coming back from this restaurant. I don't know what I was thinking. But we laughed so hard. They thought we were drunk in the lobby. I mean, we couldn't stop laughing. It just felt so good. It just frees you up. Get outside. Exercise. Um, you know, I'm almost healed from my injury, but I still get outside every day and walk my dog. We may not walk as far as we used to. I still get on my rebounder. I still sit outside. You've got to move your body. And so many people, they tell me they only move for weight loss. I said, well, how about if you just move because you'll, you'll, you'll be healthier mentally too. It's great to get, keep your spirits up and and it keeps us younger and we've got to stretch as we age, you know, before this accident, I could do the splits. I can't do them right now. My left part isn't going the same right now, but it will. I mean, it's better today than it was two weeks ago. Right. And so don't give up. Just keep going. Just know that the body was meant to heal itself. Right. And um, I don't believe we have to break it down to heal it. And we have to be patient. So 14 years ago, I was diagnosed. I had, and then I got tested a year later. I still wasn't cancer free. And then I said, ah, I'm going to wait another year and get tested because it took me 20 years to get a tumor this size anyway. So I waited and I was cancer free. So I don't know if I was cancer free one year and a day, one year and six months. You see what I'm saying? But I just said every, and when people say, when were you healed? I say the day that I was diagnosed because I took it and I, and I believed it. And trust me, it wasn't easy. I had some very um, scary times. Uh, you go through a lot of emotions because you have been told that you die. But I kept going with the people who said, you don't die, you don't die. And I wouldn't let anybody speak any words over me. And if they did, or they were fearful, I had to get them out of my life for a while. I mean, there's things you have to do. You can't, you have to protect yourself and go on. So that was my journey. My book is funny. It's not, people tell me it makes them cry. It makes them laugh and it makes them go, holy cow. But I went on a journey to show that even in the natural world, it's not all good. You know, people think just because it's natural that it's all good. And it's not. Yeah. Because Nikki Nikki wants to get your book for her mom and her friend. Her mom is a cancer survivor and her friend is fighting best breast cancer now. So sorry about that, Nikki. I'll put the link to the book in the chat. It's already in the show notes. Is that Nikki? Um, Nikki. Nikki? Yep. Nikki. Okay. Nikki book, is it? 
What's uh, your last name? Name is uh, yes, yes, it is. How'd you know? Hey, Nikki. Yeah. How did you know? No. I don't know. She started following me after your last um after our last time together, and she's been great on Facebook, and she's emailed me and and all of that. She's awesome. She's That's very so cool. cool. That's I see. I love that this show connects so many people. That's amazing. It, it really does. Your followers are amazing. But um, Nikki, I want you to read the book too, because this book is to inspire people not to get sick. It's not, uh, you know where I get my best reviews? From men. Men read my book and they say, excuse me, my nose, I did bring a Kleenex. Um, they say that it really made them look at women differently and women's breasts differently. Because I have a, you know, when I talk, when I go on stage and I talk about our breasts, I go, you know, why I didn't want my breasts removed is because they're very functional, that you, you could feed a child with them. They hold your sweaters up really good. They also, I know when a storm's coming, there's all kinds of magical things they do. They're, you know, they're, they're great. You know, they have other things that they do for us. And I didn't want them to go. I, I just, I felt like somebody was asking me to put my arm out and chop it off. It didn't make sense to me because if you open up something and the air gets in, it can metastasize. So I, I just, this was my journey. This is the way I was supposed to go. This is what God had for me. It doesn't mean you don't go, you can't go the conventional route and come out the other end just fine. You know, it's really a mental, it's a mental journey. Let me tell you, it's a spiritual and mental journey. So yeah, Nikki, you read the book too. Cause after seeing you so much, you would enjoy it. It's uh, everybody says it's like having me talking to them. If they know me, it's like, she's just talking to us in this book. So Anything else, guys? Yeah, there's a question. Hold on, let me get it because I, I was from Han. Is the book available in Europe? I live in Norway because I do believe you have a Kindle version. Yes, and you can get it on Amazon. Go to my website, venusdemarco.org, excuse me, V E N U S D E M A R C O. Go to um, my books or shop. Don't get the one that says signed by author because somehow PayPal, I'm getting rid of that because PayPal doesn't get their addresses, but it's on Amazon. And I noticed somebody, somebody in Australia has bought it, England. So yes, you most likely can get the paperback or the Kindle. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Randy says, what a delightful person. Oh, I'm thank you, Randy. You. Yep. Well, you're so much fun. Thank you so much. And it really, hopefully you'll inspire people to make some of their own cheeses, even though there are so many available now. They're yes, there are. That's, awesome. that's the great thing. You don't have to make them, but it is fun and it is easy and it is a little healthier and a little more cost effective. And um, I would, if you know, go to my website, get on my email, go to my group and join A Healthy Life Made Simple. And AJ, I can't thank you enough. You're just so wonderful. Oh, but I wanted to ask you real quick. You had a woman on. She was so pretty and she was very ethereal and she had that cheese company. Oh, Julie, Julie, um, Julie Pyatt, Rich Roll's wife. Sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. I went and looked at her cheeses. The, uh, the boxes alone were magnificent. Yeah, very, I mean, very. The presentation was just gorgeous. Oh yeah. To give for a gift. I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy my own boxes and put it and give them out as gifts. Hey, because so Shauna says, have you ever used a silicone? Oh, I mean, what goes so quickly. Have you ever used a silicone dish as a mold for the last cheese you made with the figs and cranberries? Are there silicone dishes? I don't know, but uh, maybe. Well, I'm going to find out. No, I haven't. And um, I'm starting. It's, this is me and Julie. We have this in common. We cannot handle the humidity and the heat. And it was cold here for a while. And then it got humid again. And then eating all this and 
being behind, you know, I'm like, woo, I'm getting a little, a little sweaty. So somebody in the store once gave me a dog frisbee that you can fold up to use as a fan. <laughs> it works great. It works great. Lynn says, I wish I had the attitude towards life that she has. Where'd you get that attitude, girl? Um, I come from an Italian family that likes to have fun, but you know, I think joy comes from inside. And, and I believe that when you go through rough times in your life, you realize that you have got to enjoy your life because you don't know if you have tomorrow. I always say, look, if, if I'm bitching about my day all day, and let's say I died tonight and God, I'm standing in front of Jesus. And he says, so girl, how'd you spend your last day on that earth? And I'd say, oh, bitching about how bad it was. I think he would not be happy with me. So, you know, I want to go. I want, I don't know. I just love life. I love people. I love animals. Um, I think most, for most part, I'm happy. But like everybody else, we all have moments and we have sadness. I just had a neighbor die and it was very sad for me. I really loved her. And I'm very concerned for her daughter. And, you know, we do, we have, those times, but you're not supposed to live in that moment of despair and grief and, and, and anger and anger is something you better get over it, people, and just forgive everybody because only person that hurts is you. And trust me, that's why I got cancer the first time because I was very angry. at yeah. someone. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because I just finished listening to a book on Audible for the third time because the guest is on next week and it's called Forgive to Live. And that's this right. Dr. Dick Tibbetts has done research about how, how anger and unforgiveness literally kills you, literally. And yes. So we're going to talk about that. Let's see when he's on next week. He is on next Tuesday at noon. So everybody, if you have any anger or unforgiveness, you'll want to tune into that show. Sean says silicone baking dishes are what people use for bread. And I just saw a question from Alicia. I know- It would come out square though, right? I don't know. Anyway, now all the questions are all the questions are coming now. So let me let okay. me see a couple of them. Alicia said, "I know Venus says she uses natural products, but does she dye her hair? And if so, what does she use, or does she just have naturally dark hair?" Oh yeah, that's me. Natural. Yeah, I, I'm all gray. I actually go to a hairdresser who uses natural products, and I'm not sure what they are, but I do dye my hair because I don't look good gray. I've tried it. I look washed out. I don't have pretty gray. If I had a pretty gray, I would go all gray, but no, you know, there's some things that you just gotta, you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. That's and right. Juan says, when did you become vegan? What inspired you? I think she must be tuning in late. Cause you kind of told the story at the beginning and on the last episode, but if you want to just quickly say when you became vegan, it was so your I, diagnosis that really made you go whole. Oh, I don't, I don't I was going to say whole hog, but that's not a very good saying, but whole tofu. <laughs> oh, I went whole tofu uh, 14 years ago. And, um, but I, in my early twenties tried vegetarianism. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I also became vegan for a little while in my thirties, but there was no one around really to help me like there is now. And I wasn't really doing it very well. Um, so I'm going to say it's been 14 years now. And I, I can't imagine. And plus, trust me, I get teased. I have friends who love to send me the craziest things on Facebook, but they all love me and they all love my food, but I do get teased. I don't care. It's the choice I made. Right. So, you know, we just have to keep, I want everybody looking at my, I just destroyed my kitchen. So, (laughs) but, um, I love it. And, and I always tell people, start out slow. Start where you are. Don't feel like you have to go, you know, all full tofu the first time. And then you don't know what to do, but make some vegan meals. I mean, who doesn't eat oatmeal for breakfast? You know, like eat some oatmeal, put some fruit on it, put some greens in there. So for me, I have to put greens in my oatmeal. I know that's weird, but I, if I don't, my blood sugar goes crazy wonkers on me so if i put more fiber in there like greens i'm full for hours great well venus this was a lot of fun 
It is always fun with you. I can't wait to meet you in person one day because I think what you are doing, first of all, the stamina to do this every day, all the time is amazing. Well, I think you should do a cheese class because people are loving this. All right. I, I've done cheese classes in stores, but I'd like, I need to set up an advanced one where we can really get into it. Everybody, thank you so much for coming. I really love doing this. And uh, I hope to meet some of you. Maybe there'll be like a big vegan event on the East Coast somewhere. I've lived on the West Coast my whole life and now I'm on the East Coast. And we all so. can't wait to shop at Cheeses DeMarco. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> thank all you right. so much. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Thank you. Take care. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have another fabulous cooking demo. My guest is Jackie Paderak. If you watch this show regularly, she's only 17. She reversed a lifestyle disease by going plant-based. And she's going to be making just in time for the holidays, a creamy pumpkin soup with sweet potato and yucky and a creamy cashew cheese sauce. Take care, everyone.